Okay, welcome everybody. Um, it is the cloud, uh, cloud crowd room. Uh, and my name is Sebastian Gwesgen. I work for Citrix on the Apache Cloud Stack. You can follow me on Twitter at Sebgoa. Uh, my Gmail is runseb at gmail.com. You can find me on LinkedIn and, uh, and so on. Uh, supposed to be a one hour session. It's kind, of, it's kind of long. I always wonder, you know, like why we make such, uh, such big sessions. Um, so I actually have a few slides, only a few slides, and then I want to get in a demo mode, uh, show you CloudStack. I have two demos. I have one that works and one that doesn't work. Uh, so we'll go, you know, we'll go through them, and my goal is to give you, a, you know, an idea and, uh, you know, see how you can get your feet wet with, uh, with CloudStack and uh, show you some of the, some of the features. Uh, for this, I'm going to use DevCloud, and then I'm going to use uh, CloudMonkey. So those are two tools uh, that we have in, uh, in, in CloudStack. DevCloud is a sandbox, virtual box image that contains CloudStack fully packaged. And CloudMonkey is a common line uh, interface. Uh, so it's useful for administrator of uh, CloudStack deployments who want to, to manage their, uh, their cloud. So just a few slides. If you want more slides, go to uh, SlideShare and look me up, Sebastian Gwazgen, uh, or look up CloudStack or build a cloud, uh, and you'll find lots of slides about, uh, about CloudStack. Um, and if you, you know, don't find the link, just you know, find me afterwards and I'll, I'll show that to you. Uh, there's been a few talks about CloudStack already yesterday. Um, but we didn't really have an introductory talk. Joe gave a talk in, a, in another room, but in this session we didn't really have one. So CloudStack is really a, an infrastructure as a service uh, solution. Uh, and when we look at the, the YAS landscape, you know, of course there are different uh, you know, software out there that you could use if you want to build your own infrastructure as a service or your own really cloud in the sense of the Amazon uh, EC2 cloud and, uh, and so on. Uh, so Open Nebula, uh, project I used to work on out of Spain from the uh, University of Madrid, uh, Overt, really pushed by Red Hat, uh, Eucalyptus, which was really the, the original you know, project that came out in 2007 when uh, you know, EC2 was very famous and the guys at the uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, you know, came up with uh, a first implementation to, to provide the EC2 API. Uh, Ganeti, it's actually a uh, it's, I think it's in uh, Google code. And uh, you know, it came out of Google. It's uh, pure Python, and it uh, supports KVM. Uh, so it's a smaller footprint, but it, it, it's used out there a little bit. Of course, OpenStack, you've heard of it. Uh, and then CloudStack, which you know, we're going to talk about uh, today, which is in the uh, Apache uh, Software Foundation. We're in incubation, um, so we should vote on graduation uh, within a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, if we, you know, all cross all the, the T's and, uh, and whatnot. So when, you, when you're thinking about building uh, infrastructure as a service or your cloud, you know, it has lots of challenges. And <clears throat> when you think about a software, you tend to think, okay, I'm going to grab that uh, tarball, I'm going to grab that binary, uh, you know, install it on my machine and, I, and I'll be done. With a YAS, it's much more challenging because, you know, it's not really out of the box. So the software is out of the box for the front end, but then you have lots of components that come to play within your, uh, your cloud. So you need a form of hypervisors. You need to choose a hypervisor, Zen, KVM, uh, VMware, uh, Hyper-V, you, know, you, you name it. Uh, you need storage, of course. You need a storage infrastructure to store those virtual machine images. You need storage to provide uh, you know, the back end of the running instances. Uh, so, you know, lots of uh, challenges here. And then you, you need a, a flexible network to provide networking to all those virtual machine uh, instances. Um, so th those three components really, you know, it, it goes beyond just installing software and having a nice Java application. Uh, you need to involve your uh, system administrators, you need to involve your security officer, your storage engineers, your network engineers. And all those, uh, all those guys need to get together to really architect that cloud properly, and then you'll have uh, your solution. So CloudStack really aims to be you know, as much out of the box as possible, and it aims to uh, ease the installation and the construction of that cloud. Uh, but it's not as simple as just you know, configure, make, make, install, and, uh, and you're done. 
so to me, uh, a yes or a cloud, you know, if you, if you think about the cloud as really uh, something at the, at the infrastructure layer, it's really a data center orchestrator. And it looks at data, you know, at storage, uh, data movement, and data processing. That's really the, the three main things you can do with, uh, with data. Uh, so CloudStack aims to, you know, basically provision virtual machines for data processing. Any type of applications you're going to have running in those instances uh, aims to, uh, you know, provision and configure the network that you have to support all of those instances, and also, you know, play nice with all the storage uh, infrastructure that you have. So all those components need to be in there. And at the same time, of course, you know, the, the, the big challenge is that it needs to uh, handle failures if, uh, you know, storage fails, uh, hosts go down, uh, you know, you name it. It needs to support large scale. And really, that's the thing. Yesterday, there was this talk by, uh, by Shredip about, you know, large scale uh, object stores. So large scale, you know, suppose um, uh, commodity hardware, uh, 10, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of hosts, and when they go down, your system needs to be able to uh, to handle that uh, that failure well, and needs to be able to you know to scale to that many that many nodes. Uh, a key component of uh, of cloud for me is really the programmability. Um, so all that setup, you need to be able to uh, to program it. It's not only you know giving access to your uh, your operators, your sysadmins to manage that cloud. You need to be able to have your developers actually use it and write applications that can talk directly to the infrastructure. So that's that's a key component. And at any level of the cloud, whether you're talking you know platform or software application, software as a service, you know all those layers are uh, programmable, uh, you know through some type of uh, of API. Uh, and that brings me to, to DevOps, uh, you know, just a quick slide on this, just because we're seeing a lot of the community going towards the, the DevOps movement with, you know, developers getting closer to the operation, operators getting closer to the, to the development. So if you look at the, the, the spectrum between these guys, uh, developers, you know, tend to be Java guys with their IDE operators, you know, they're more uh, shell and then Python and CLI and so on. So you're trying to bring those two together to have an infrastructure that gives you a very dynamic uh, setup and really um, enables your developers to you know, manage and provision the infrastructure for the applications that, th that they want. Uh, one thing that's interesting with CloudStack is that it's a Java application. So it would tend to fit more on the developer side rather than the operation side. Um, of course, you know now I'm going to I'm going to talk later about uh, CLI in CloudStack. So that gives you a nice interface, you know, for your uh, your operators and your your sysadmin. Uh, where all of this is going really is now you're taking you're starting to talk about software-defined data centers, um, and that really means that you're empowering your developers uh, to actually manage the infrastructure directly, provision the infrastructure dynamically, and you have an infrastructure that scales. Uh, you know, on demand, depending on the needs of the applications. So, so your developers who you know tend to be uh, less concerned with operations uh, problems now they are getting closer to the to the fabric, and they have to take that into account. So that's a you know a rather important shift in the way uh, you know an organization operates uh, things. Uh, so CloudStack is in the ASF, and I wanted to just show you this slide to uh, you know think about the community because you know it's about building a community in the incubator and uh, having some type of uh, insurance or uh, assurance that you ha you are building a community so here i just looked at the mailing list <coughs> and uh, you know in january we had a very active mailing list with 5000 emails in the month that was you know a little bit overwhelming but basically i uh, i looked at the mailing list and i uh, you know uh, got out all the, the the different email addresses and i equated a uh, an email address with a contributor. So what you see here in red is before uh, we joined the ASF, um, and then in blue that's when we that's when we joined uh, the incubator. Uh, so before the ASF, we had a growth. You know, it was uh, you know nice, but you know we had a nice little growth. But you see that the, the rate of change, you know, as soon as we joined the incubator, really spiked, and, and uh, you know we managed to to build that community. The, the differences between the continuous line and the sh and uh, dashed is just uh, the developer versus the user mailing list, and you see that 
roughly on the developer side, if we accumulate, we have you know close to 400 contributors on the developer side, and on the user side, you know around uh, around 300. Uh, there is a, a common part of you know, roughly 40 percent between those two communities. So we have developers, you know, answering user questions on the user list. So if you look at the, if you want to know the total size of the uh, of the community, you cannot just add the two, you know. So uh, you need to take into account the, the common part, but roughly uh, our community is around 600 people. So that gives you, you know, some background about YAS and what CloudStack is trying to achieve and a little bit about the, about the community. So let's, let's have a, you know, a quick look about the, the internals. Uh, and as I said, we're trying to build this flexible infrastructure as a service that deals with uh, processing, uh, storage, and data movement. And we try to be as agnostic to any other technologies that, that we can. So in terms of hypervisor, you know, we support uh, Zen, Zen Server, VMware, uh, Hyper-V is coming probably this summer. Uh, Oracle VM used to be uh, in there, but has been uh, dropped. I mean, dropped is not the word, but uh, you know, it's not, uh, we're working on putting it back in in a future release. And of course, KVM, and then a, a nice feature is that we do bare metal. So we can do, uh, we can do bare metal provisioning if you, uh, if you don't need uh, virtual machines. In terms of storage, uh, I'll talk a little bit about this. We have two types of storage. One is, uh, I always start with secondary storage, which is weird. You should start with primary, but. So secondary storage, that's your image catalog. So you know, in that, yes, you're trying to provision virtual machines. And the image that's used for those virtual machines is stored in a, a catalog. So the secondary storage, that is catalog. And traditionally, we use NFS, could use any object store, uh, OpenStack Swift. We are nice to everybody. Uh, and uh, you know, other types of uh, object stores. Uh, in primary storage, uh, we can use local disk, ASCSI, Ceph. I think there's going to be a talk on Ceph uh, next. So we now have support for Ceph as a primary storage. So that means that when virtual machines get started, uh, the disk of the running instance is going to be on a, on a Ceph uh, RADOS block device, actually not the file system, but just the, the RBD uh, gateway. And I think, I don't know who's talking next, but we'll, uh, we'll get that. In terms of networking, uh, when you look at CloudStack, that's probably the part that's, little bit, uh, that's the, the most challenging to understand at the beginning, because if you're a developer, you know, you know the Java. If you're a sysadmin, you're more on the uh, operating system and uh, packaging side and so on. But here we really have a, a powerful networking uh, setup. Uh, and uh, one of the, the, the main design, I think, when, when uh, CloudStack got started was really isolating uh, multi-tenants. So in the cloud, you know, you have multiple users, multiple organization, you know, using that cloud and you want to isolate them from each other. So how do you do that from a networking standpoint? Well, you know, VLAN was the, the you know, the answer, uh, at least at the beginning. I mean, now we, you know, we have SDN, but so there is very strong support for VLAN uh, isolation. Uh, you know, we can do firewall, uh, load balancing, uh, you know, HA, VPN, site-to-site -site VPN, virtual private cloud. There, it's a very feature-rich uh, system for, uh, for, for networking. Of course, there is um, also support for newest uh, SDN technologies like the Nisera private gateway, like uh, GRE tunnels. Uh, the big switch, uh, virtual switch uh, support is coming in, uh, and also uh, MidoNet from MidoCora, even though it hasn't been committed. Uh, and there's a talk this afternoon about SDN uh, in CloudStack. As I said, it's a Java application, uh, runs on Tomcat, Axis. Uh, we use Maven for the build. And I'm going to show the second demo I'm going to show actually still uses Ant, the, the 4.0 release and the 4.01 and still uses Ant. But uh, starting with 4.1, we've moved entirely to, uh, to Maven. Uh, and there is a new plugin architecture. We, we heard about it uh, yesterday. In terms of releases, uh, we had our first Apache release uh, via the incubator in November. So that's Apache 4.0. Uh, we also have our first uh, bug, fix, bug fix release, uh, release 401, that came out, and we are trying to be, uh, you know, time-based, uh, focused, uh, releasing, having a major release every four months. So that's uh, that's a little bit challenging, but that's what we are trying to do: get into the habit of quickly release, uh, making uh, releases. 
So 4.1 should come out uh, late March, early April, if we uh, sleep a little bit and uh, time to vote. Uh, but it should be, should be there uh, end of March, yeah, April. And that means that you can expect 4.2 to, uh, to come in, uh, in July. Uh, small slide on, uh, on the architecture, and it's more a slide on the taxonomy of how, you know, what are the terminology that we use in, in, in CloudStack. And that's a you know, basic data center. So we have a concept of zone, kind of availability zones like in EC2. So here a data center is a zone. And then within that, I need to get rid of that animation. Uh, within the zones, we have pods, which are you know, roughly racks. But it's really a logical uh, denomination. It, it's not really a physical limitation. And within pods, we have clusters, which has a group of nodes of a homogeneous type of hypervisor. That means that within a single rack, you could have a cluster of uh, VMware, a cluster of uh, Zen, and a cluster of KVM. So if you want to mix hypervisors, uh, you can. And it's a, it's a very powerful uh, feature. Uh, attached to each cluster, we have that primary storage, which is the storage that runs the, VM, the, the disk image of the running VMs. And we have a secondary storage, which is storage that's available across the zone. Okay, So that's where we have the image catalog. And when an image needs to get started, we look in secondary storage for the root image, it gets transferred into primary storage, except if it's already there, uh, and then the image gets uh, started. Uh, <coughs> in terms of inter interaction, the way, the way this works, it's not a, it's not a, a distributed setup uh, in the sense that we have a, a central management server, uh, and you'll see how uh, you, know, you, can, you can run that. Uh, it's backed by a MySQL uh, database. And if you have a very heavy you know, cloud, lots of uh, requests coming and so on, you could have multiple management server with a load balancer in front and replicate MySQL uh, to really get to a very high uh, load. The, the management server exposes um, an API. Okay? And that API uh, is used to build a GUI. So we have a very nice uh, web uh, UI that you can, you can use to, uh, to manage that cloud. And we're going to look at this. We also have a mapping to EC2, uh, EC2 API. So if you have existing tools with uh, you know, scripts using EC2 commands, you can, you can use that with the, uh, the EC2 uh, interface. Um, now you see that depending on the hypervisor that you choose, uh, Zen, KVM, and so on, you, uh, you have a specific protocol to talk to, uh, to those hypervisors. So Zen, you know, you're going to talk to uh, XAPI, uh, KVM. Here there is a, a dedicated agent that you need to install on the node to, to be able to, uh, to talk to it. Uh, and vSphere, we, we, VMware, we talk to, uh, to vCenter. So depending on the type of hypervisor, CloudStack can use that, that, uh, the appropriate protocol to, uh, to get going. A uh, very interesting point is that CloudStack can also talk to uh, physical networking devices like uh, Netscaler, Juniper SRX, uh, and some of the Cisco uh, switches. And you know, we're going we're gonna to have more support for Cisco uh, hardware coming in. But it's, uh, it's a very interesting in the sense that you can mix. It's not only virtual infrastructure, you can really mix in your data center, uh, you know, virtual hardware and uh, physical devices that, uh, that you may have uh, already. Uh, another point that's a little bit challenging when you start with CloudStack <coughs> is that we have those system VMs. Those are virtual appliances that run in the infrastructure and they help you to orchestrate uh, things. So we have things like the, the secondary storage VM uh, that helps you, you know, grab an image from the catalog and then uh, place it on the, the, the appropriate hypervisors to, to get going. And we also have uh, the router VM that gives you uh, HA with HA proxy, uh, uh, firewall, uh, you name it. Lots of networking devices are installed in that, uh, that router. So uh, to get your feet wet, uh, of course, you know, if you have an existing data center and uh, you want to get going, uh, you know, go, go for it. But if you want to have a quick look, uh, we have this, uh, this sandbox that's called DevCloud. It's a virtual box image that contains uh, CloudStack, uh, MySQL database. And it uses nested virtualization so that you can start VMs within that virtual box image. 
Okay, so it uh, basically we you know we, we aim to have a, a fully contained environment that you can you can run and if you want to have a look at the, the UI, check the API, see how you know what are those system VMs and uh, and so on. It's all contained in the in that Dev Cloud. It's not perfect, so you know if you if you download it and install it, I mean. You may have some issues. It's a little bit tricky just because it's using nested virtualization and the, the network is a little bit convoluted. Um, so, you know, it's not a fully packaged and a finished uh, product. Um, the, the, the easy way to use it is the really fully self-contained way. So you're going to have a virtual box and it also run on, uh, on Fusion, I think, and, uh, and Parallel. Uh, you can probably uh, use those to, to run it. So within your machine, you, you're going to run that Dev Cloud instance, and within it, you have the management server that has a MySQL in it. Uh, you have the system VMs that are going to start, and you're going to be able to launch very small uh, instances, TTY Linux. And the reason you know you just launched this TTY Linux is uh, you know really a RAM uh, RAM issue that you, you know you're limited because it's all contained within that. A single virtual box instance. Uh, another interesting way to look at it is really to uh, to use Dev Cloud as a host. So in that setup, you know you can run CloudStack on your uh, on your laptop. You have MySQL on your laptop directly, and you use a host only interface so that from your laptop you can talk to the uh, the virtual box image, and you're going to just launch instances in there. So if you had a beefy laptop, you could imagine launching like two, three, maybe four Dev Cloud instances that you just use as hypervisor, Zen hypervisors, and you have Dev Cloud running on your uh, on your local host. So I'm going to try to demo those two uh, those two cases. The first one works, and then somehow the second one I have uh, have an issue. So I don't know. Maybe Kirk can uh, you know he gave a talk on uh, you know, basically. Uh, you know, solving problems in CloudStack, so maybe you can help me. So we're gonna we're gonna demo this. The other thing is CloudMonkey uh, coming from the the Open Nebula world. What what was very nice with, and is still very nice with Open Nebula is that they, they built a very powerful uh, command line interface. So if you are an admin, it's uh, it's really nice. You can just manage your host, manage your network, manage the the VMs you know from the command line. And when I started with CloudStack uh, in July, it's, you know really that's that's something that was uh, that was lacking. Um, but we have a, a developer in India, Rohit Yadav, and he came up with uh, Cloud Monkey, uh, which gives you a, which gives us a, a very nice CLI. Uh, it's 600 lines of Python. You can get it from the, the cheese shop, uh, pip install Cloud Monkey, and, and then it has lots of very interesting features. Uh, you know, auto completion. Uh, you can use it in scripts, uh, interactive shell, and and I'm gonna try to do my best to uh, to give you. A, a demo of this. Uh, so basically, what you would do is that you would launch Cloud Monkey, and now you have an interactive shell uh, to basically talk to your cloud. Okay. So here, you know, uh, we, we're going to do this. Uh, you set up the key, the access key, the secret key, just like with Amazon, and then you have, you know, you can uh, you can talk to your cloud. You, know, you don't talk to the hand; you talk to the cloud. And now you, you know, list users, list virtual machine. You can you can get a help for every every single command, and then you can uh, you know deploy virtual machine here, uh, and then stop them. So we're gonna try to do that. Okay. Um, any questions before I go in the the demo? No. It's always. Crystal clear. Okay, so here I have a uh, virtual box running on this uh, MacBook Air. You see that I've, um, I have the Dev Cloud uh, sandbox installed. Uh, you need to bump up the memory a little bit, so I put uh, two gigs in there. Um, in this particular case, uh, it's a NAT. It's NAT. It's just a NAT interface, and we have. Uh, a few ports that are uh, forwarded. So the, the web UI of CloudStack would run on 8080. Uh, we also uh, forwarded 22 to 2222. 22, so we're gonna have SSH access to that Dev Cloud so that you know I show you what's in, what's in it a little bit. 
um, and a few other ports. So what you do basically, you start the instance. So you just start this, and again, it's a uh, it's a Ubuntu uh, 1204 Zen, Zen kernel, and within that virtual box, we're gonna launch uh, VM. So it uses uh, nested uh, virtualization. The other demo that I'm going to do is to actually run CloudStack on the laptop directly and use DevCloud as the uh, as a as a host. So what I'll do is actually use the 401 release and our releases are um, um, source code release. I mean, we do have binaries that are provided <coughs> by, uh, by the community, but the actual release is a source code release. So you can download it from the incubator, uh, incubator website, untar it, and uh, I'm just doing this waiting for the machine to boot. And then you'll have the, the source code of, of CloudStack right there, and we'll, we'll do a, a compile. So here the, uh, the dev cloud, has, uh, the image has, uh, has started. Um, can you read that? Better? So you can, you can SSH in the machine. Um, and uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's not it, and we forwarded uh, 22. Password is password, and now you're within uh, DevCloud. You'll see it's a uh, 12.04 uh, Ubuntu Zen kernel, <coughs> and you see that if you use the uh, the XE command from uh, from Zen, you see what's uh, what's running. Um, I just put a, put a watch on this, so we see Dom Zero running here, and then we have those other two here running. They are the system VM, the secondary storage VM, and then the the proxy VM. Uh, and the reason they're started is because I I used it yesterday. So the, um, the web UI, it's going to be uh, localhost 8080 slash uh, client. And default password is admin password. So here is the, your first view of the, the CloudStack uh, UI. Uh, lots of very nice JavaScript in there. Uh, and the first thing to look at is the infrastructure and you see zone, pod, pods, cluster, hosts, primary storage, secondary storage, system VM, so all those you know, terminologies that I talked about there, they're right there. So within that virtual box image, you have one zone that's defined. Uh, it's a dev cloud zone. Uh, there is only one pod, okay? And within that pod, we have one cluster, which is a Zen server cluster, okay? And within that cluster, we have a single host, which is that, that uh, VM, okay? Uh, storage, as I said, secondary storage, that's the, uh, the image catalog, and NFS is the, the easy, uh, easy way to get started. So there is NFS running on that, uh, on that machine. And for primary storage here in this case, uh, we use uh, local storage. Okay, on the on the machine, and you could have, you know, in real life, uh, you could have uh, uh, Ceph, for example, which we're gonna hear about. Hey, Sebastian. Yeah. For the secondary storage, do you have to stand up an external like NFS? It's with here. It's within. Yeah. Uh, so here you see in the system VMs that they are they are running. We have the <coughs> secondary storage VM, the console proxy, which we gives you. Uh, uh, VNC access on that uh, on that machine. Um, what we have also is the, the templates. So that lists the, the images that are in that image catalog. So here we have an image for the system VMs and we have an image for that TTY Linux. Okay. 
so it's already it's already in there um, you can manage users of course so here you see that we have uh, an admin group and then view users we only have one user which is the, the admin user and <coughs> reason I want to show you this is that when you list the users you see that you have the API key and the secret key just like in the Amazon uh, uh, you know cloud EC2 so you can one of those icons here uh, helps you generate the keys for that user okay so here they are they are generated and uh, you know you can you can get them here so we'll we'll use those keys for uh, for cloud monkey um, so let's look at instances here we see that I have an instance that's still in there that's uh, stop so we're gonna try to uh, create an instance uh, where do I want to start that instance in the dev cloud zone and what type of uh, template do I want to use so it's a template that's already in the catalog I only have one tiny Linux and I'm going to use a tiny offering that's exactly the same thing as instance types in EC2 where you have you know small micro small medium extra large uh, GPU and so on so here uh, we have tiny offering so not a lot of RAM uh, I'm not going to attach a disk and then you launch and here you see that uh, on the on the actual VM uh, the virtual router started so that's this other virt uh, system VM appliance that started that's going to you know give us network services for that uh, guest and uh, so now we have those three system VMs running at uh, one point if everything goes well we should see the instance pop up uh, hopefully there you go so here the instance has popped up uh, instance 210 VM and uh, it's in running state mm -hmm. what? That was fast. I mean, it's cloud stack <laughs> cloud stack is really fast Okay, and then we, when we look at the at the GUI, of course, we see that you know the image, uh, the instance we started is in uh, is in running mode. Uh, if we look at storage here, uh, you know what you can do with an instance, uh, you can take uh, snapshots, for example, uh, of view volumes. Here is the basically the the root you know disk image, and here you can take a snapshot. So let's take a snapshot of that VM. Oh, maybe I need to stop the VM. Hmm? Kirk? Should work, I think. Yeah. Okay, it looks like it works. So if we go back to storage, no. change the select view to snapshots. Oh, here you go. Thank God I have. Uh, thank God I have Kirk with me. So now I'm viewing the snapshots that I took on that uh, on that instance, and uh, so that's right now, right? Uh, 1851. Uh, it's uh, European time. We have the snapshot of that image. Uh, I was talking about the service offerings. So they're here. And you have offerings for compute, for disk, for network. Uh, and that tiny offering here, you see when you look at it, again, it's an instance type. And you see that it's uh, you know, 100 megabyte, 100 megahertz um, you know, uh, type. So it's really small so that it can run in that, in that dev cloud. Uh, if you want to change, uh, configuration for cloud stack global settings here you have lots of things and the one I always point out is um, if you want to turn on the turn on the EC2 uh, mapping here uh, you just have enable EC2 API you, you set it to true and now you have that other little Tomcat application that runs that gives you this mapping so that you can use uh, EC2 uh, uh, commands Okay, so now 
let's look at CloudMonkey, which is at CLI. We've seen the, uh, the UI. The UI really is making uh, API calls. CloudStack has a very rich uh, API, over like 300 uh, calls. Uh, so let me turn on Firebug here, and you'll see that you know when you make uh, when you click anywhere on that UI, it's basically making uh, making those calls here. Um, so that's very easy if you're trying to start working on. It's very nice if you're starting to work on uh, on CloudStack to actually look at the interaction through the UI to actually learn the the API. Uh, so in that case here, we have a, a list template uh, list template call. And it's really uh, a query API, okay? So the URL, you pass the command list templates. And then here you have something that I had a hard time to find. And uh, that's why I use Firebug. You have a template filter. So you see the, the required arguments here. Uh, so it's very useful for, for debugging. So the UI uses the API and the CloudMonkey, uh, CloudMonkey is the same thing. Uh, in the sense that it uses the same API, it uses uh, Python bindings that are built with a system called Marvin. Uh, it's very powerful. Marvin is also used for the integration uh, testing and uh, continuous integration. Uh, so let's launch the, uh, the CloudMonkey uh, uh, interactive shell. Uh, so here you're in the shell, uh, you can you can get rid of the you can get rid of the, the monkey if you want. Uh, I just don't know how to uh, I just don't know how to do it yet. So uh, basically, every API call is available through this. You can do raw API call, or what Rohit did is kind of he he parsed parsed them a little bit differently. So <coughs> you have auto completion. So tab tab. So here, if I want to do list. I see all the available APIs uh, from CloudStack with lists. So there, you know, list ISOs, list hypervisor, list instance groups, uh, all those are available. So what I want to do first is list users. So list users, I see that I have only uh, one user in there, as I should do in, in the UI. It's the, uh, the admin user. And I see it's secret key um, API keys. Uh, <coughs> you can set. Uh, a different host. So here by default it's set to localhost and port 8080. But if you had a cloud that was remote, uh, you could set the, the host and the port to that remote uh, cloud. So that, that would work. Here what I'm going to do is just set the key, for example, to show you. So you would do, uh, you know, set API key, even though here in that case I think they're already on there. But you would set the key like this secret key, I'm just going to grab them from here. If they are not defined, then you get them from the UI. And now we can do uh, list virtual machines. So you see the virtual machines that are running, uh, or not running, or also in stop state. So where is our uh, running instance? It's this one. Uh, I2 10 VM and you see that it's running state okay and it has an ID so here is the ID of that VM so if we go back to the UI let me close firebug we go back to the UI that that instance is running right so we're just gonna kill it from uh, stop it from uh, from cloud monkey so I just copy this, and we're going to do stop, space, tap, tap for auto completion. So virtual machine, and if you don't know how to use it, you do just do dash help, and it tells you that there's a required argument, which is the ID of the machine. So stop virtual machine, ID equals what I just copied, and it doesn't work. <laughs> So I go back to my cheat sheet. Stop your 
virtual machine ID equals. Do you copy the right ID? Is it the right ID? There's a bunch of them. Yeah, I know. The PM ID. So let's go here. Should be this one, no? There you go. There you go. So I stopped, and it looks like this time I didn't go. I didn't get a. I didn't get an error message. So let's go back to the UI instances. Yeah. Okay. So I managed to stop the VM with the uh, with the CLI. Amazing. Uh, what's interesting also with Cloud Monkey is that you know if I go back to that list virtual machines, I can actually you know pipe grab for ID, uh, and I would get you know everything. So the the output you know the default output has lots of information. You could set it in uh, tabular output; it would actually look like the Open Nebula uh, shell. <coughs> but here you can also you know pipe and use uh, other Unix command. You could use CloudMonkey within scripts as well, which is uh, very powerful. Uh, if you wanted to start uh, a VM, uh, 10 minutes. So you would do uh, list templates, and that's where it tells me I'm missing the template filter. So template filter equals all. And I had that problem yesterday, and that's uh, that's why I used Firebug to, to find it. So if we look at the, the templates, we see we only have two templates in there, as I showed you in the UI, the system VM template, and then the the tiny Linux uh, the tiny Linux template. <coughs> and you see that it has an ID. Okay, I was, as we said, everything has a has a UID. So now what we want to do is actually uh, start that virtual machine. So it's not start, it's actually deploy virtual machine dash help if, we, if you don't know how to use it. Um, and then you specify the, the arguments uh, to, to get it going. So obviously, hopefully that gives you a good idea of, uh, of Cloud Monkey. Since I have just a little bit of time left, uh, what I wanted to do is uh, show you the other way to use, uh, um, to use uh, uh, Dev Cloud. So let me close that Dev Cloud here. And I'm going to start another one here, which is called Dev Cloud 2, which solves some issues. Uh, Dev Cloud 2 has a little bit of a different network type. So we have actually two network interfaces. We have a host-only uh, adapter, and then we also have the, the NAT interface that gives outbound connectivity to the, uh, to the actual VM. Um, so we launched that Dev Cloud 2, and now <coughs> what you can do, so where was I with the source code here? Um, you can basically, so you build it, you download the dependency with maven, maven-p dependency, you build it, and clean all, build all, and then <coughs> you, do, uh, you do a deploy server to deploy the, uh, the application. So that's really if you're doing everything from source, okay? This is not meant for, um, this is not meant for uh, operators that are going to deploy the, the application. So now it's deployed. Uh, let's also initialize the database. So deploy database. As I said, we have MySQL in the back end of this. So here, you know, this, this ant uh, profile is basically going to initialize all the tables uh, for MySQL. Uh, so let's, like, let's have a look at it. Uh, so this is running on my laptop. You see that I have, you have a, the cloud database and it has lots of tables uh, VM instance, VM template, uh, 
you, you name it, okay? Everything is, is stored in there. Now, what's interesting here is that uh, we set up everything from scratch, so when I actually run, uh, when I run this, uh, the, the debug mode, we're going to access the server, and we're going to see what's in the infrastructure uh, definition. So here we are running the server, okay? So let's go back to our uh, web UI, localhost 8080. So it's running, that's great, good sign. Password, okay. And now we have this new splash screen because nothing has been configured. So yes, I've used CloudStack before. And now if I go to infrastructure, I have a blank slate, okay? So I initialize the database and there is nothing configured in there. So now I would go and actually configure the data center. I have to define the zone, I have to define the pods, and, uh, and so on, okay? Um, to do this quickly, here you go, I'm going to use Marvin. Marvin is that uh, Python binding of the uh, CloudStack API. And basically, that means that instead of using the UI to configure the data center, you can write the definition of your data center in uh, basically a text file, okay? And then you can actually use Marvin as a call deploy data center, and that's going to make all the required calls to configure your infrastructure. So, you know, create zone, create uh, pub, create uh, storage, and, uh, and so on. Uh, so hopefully you can, you can see this. If I just look at that, that configuration file, because uh, I, I think it's a very powerful mechanism. So let's cut it. We see that here in that particular case, it's a, you know, a nice dictionary. And you see that <laughs> it, defines, it defines the zone, dev cloud. Uh, defines your physical network with different types of uh, traffic types that are defined in there. Uh, what type of network providers you have uh, available on that uh, infrastructure, the DNS uh, setup, all the IP range for your uh, host in your data center, for the uh, system VMs, uh, guests, your cluster. So here you see that we only have uh, one host which is of type Zen, that's the virtual box, uh, and root password, it's in there. And then at the end, and then at the end, that's the end. Okay. <laughs> it used, used to be that there was a section here to actually define some configuration variables uh, in addition to this, just like the, uh, the EC2 that I mentioned and so on. You can also set the configuration settings with a, an API call. So, Remember, here the infrastructure is zero, and now if I didn't screw things up, I'm going to call Marvin, just Python scripts that's talking to the management server, making the API calls to configure my uh, data center. Uh, so let's see what the, the debug says. At some point, it's going to receive the, the calls and start configuring everything. Okay, so now it's starting. You see that it's trying to add the host, found the host. It's creating all the proper network. Yeah, some warning, that's for Kirk, uh, and so on. Okay, so now let's go back to the UI. And if we refresh this, hey, yeah, okay. So now we use that Python script to make those calls and configure everything automatically. Uh, what we see here is that the system VMs haven't started. They're in stop state, okay? And what the system is going to do now is recognize that those little helpers are not running. It's gonna try to, uh, to run them and, and then we're gonna go back to the, the first demo of being able to launch instances, uh, use CloudMonkey and, uh, and so on. So that's where the demo stops because here I have some errors, okay? 
and I don't know why. Uh, so I need to talk to Kirk and see what I'm doing wrong. Okay. Uh, so I think I'm done with the demo. Um, about out of, out of time, Andre. Two minutes. Two minutes. Perfect. So that was, you know, a quick introduction to CloudStack and how you can get your feet wet with uh, DevCloud. You see that you should be able to do this in, uh, you know, 45 minutes with that uh, DevCloud and CloudMonkey. And hopefully that gives you, uh, you know, an interesting CloudStack and you want to use it in your real data centers, not just playing around uh, on, your, uh, on your laptop. Uh, as I said, we're in incubation, so incubator, apache.org, CloudStack. Uh, IRC, CloudStack, and uh, CloudStack Dev uh, on Twitter, at CloudStack. Lots of information on SlideShare, as I said, and you can also follow me on SlideShare. I put lots of content there. Uh, we had a collaboration conference uh, in Vegas uh, back in November, early December. We're going to have a new one in Europe uh, probably in May, and then another one in, uh, again in November in, uh, in the U.S. So, you know, the community is growing. We are very active, running more and more events to, uh, you know, keep, uh, keep growing and keep improving the software. Uh, and you can find lots of uh, cool information. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, you could you could use Cloud Monkey actually to to configure the the cloud. Yeah. So if you no, so you can use Marvin. I mean, when Cloud Monkey didn't exist, uh, they they used Marvin to to deploy the data center. And that's really a Python script that makes the call. CloudMonkey just hides some of the little bit of the complexity, but you can do you can do the same thing. And if you look at Roit's uh, wiki page or the, uh, you have the you have the same thing. It's just written <coughs> differently. So here is uh, basically in that case a Bash script, okay, and you use. So that's a bash script and you define, you know, again here you define all your IPs and everything, the, uh, uh, the host uh, in bash, so that, that makes it easier. And then you see the cloud monkey calls within bash. So, you know, list, uh, pound CLI, where is, where is CLI, where is CLI, yeah, so CLI, cloud monkey, and then you just do you know, create physical network, blah, blah. But if you look at the, the way those calls are made, it's exactly the same thing that Marvin is doing. It's a little bit easier to understand here. So here you have some of the typical calls to create a data center. You, you need to create a physical network. On that network, you need to define traffic types, uh, what type of service providers you have <coughs> on that network. Uh, Defining the network, actually figuring out those API calls on your own is probably the, the most difficult thing. I, I, I did it once and that was kind of a little bit challenging. Then you see you have the create pod, uh, the VLAN IP range, uh, you add the cluster, you add the host, storage, you know. It's the same thing as you're doing on the UI, just scripted. Okay, thank you.